Alright guys, Hatless John coming at you to start this video off. Uh, I do want to let you guys know real quick before we get going. We have 25% off the entire LS Nasty store. Go and get your stuff. Uh, I got some Christmas shirts coming out soon. I got some beanies. I got some hats. Uh, but right now, uh, everything on the store, hats, shirts, stickers, 25% off. Go and get them now. Uh, I'm running out of stock. And that was the plan. Just clean the shelves, get ready for uh, the Christmas sale I'm about to put on. So everyone, first link in the description below. Check out the LS Nasty store. Get the stuff. They're shipping same day or the following day, so you're going to get this stuff quick. Be sure to check it out. Enjoy today's video. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the John Doc YouTube channel. It has been so long since I kind of had like a laid back vlog where I'm not just like in the shop like going nuts talking real fast because I'm so overly excited. So I just want to say what's up. Thank you guys for checking out the channel. If you haven't already, go down and click that subscribe button. We got a bunch of killer stuff coming up to end the 2019 season of videos oh what do, oh no what do we have here what do we have here god i only bring you the most exciting stuff looks like, oh no it's muffin cap got peeled straight back blue and it looks like there's the van it looks like a little well head on right here at this nice little intersection in the wonderful town of benson north carolina so hope you guys are having a wonderful day when you guys are viewing this it will be saturday so you made it through the week if you guys are uh, working those jobs where you can't wait for the weekend. The weekend is finally here, so enjoy it. Go turn some wrenches. Go have some fun. Go watch some racing. If you haven't been watching the World Cup Finals, you need to check that out. Go to speedvideo.com. You can check out our boys, David Farlow and Eric Gold, in the Nano Pros inspired Ford Mustang. Uh, you guys have seen us race them down in Darlington. I am boys with both David and Eric. They're both two awesome friends. Uh, they help me out whenever I need anything with racing. And they're up there killing it, running quarter mile. I think David went like a 7-1 at 193 miles an hour. Um, if you guys remember correctly, the Bad Apple and uh, the Yellow Car were racing down in Darlington at uh, the Carolina, no at Woostock. Uh, Caroline no time stuff so uh, I just want to talk to you guys by the title of this video obviously you know we're talking about the cow it had that boost solenoid issue uh, previously and I'm just going, going to um, kind of explain what happened a little bit better for some of you guys that don't know what goes on with a boost controller and what had happened uh, to cause it to act the way it did. Everything on the car itself is fine. Uh, the boost controller is what we use to regulate boost. So that's how we control uh, launch boost and overall boost. So uh, you hear me talk about that a lot, being that we run turbo cars. The boost controller concept is the same no matter if we're running on Holly or through an AMS. Uh, the Holly just happens to do it inside the software where I have on the cow a separate box that only does the boost control. Uh, so that's one of the perks of having a Holly uh, uh, Dominator, Terminator, or HP is that you can do the boost control all through the ECU. You, know, you don't have to go and buy an extra box. Um, Holly also does sell a complete uh, boost control kit that comes with the solenoids and the bolt valves and everything like that that you need uh, to make it work. We run all of our cars off of CO2. Uh, you can run them off of vacuum if you have like a mechanical boost controller, but we all run CO2 boost controllers. It allows for a more finite adjustment. Uh, you can really dial it in there and get it to act exactly how you want it. Uh, you'll hear us talk a lot about the settings for the tune-up. Now, when we talk about the boost controller, we don't talk about actual boost. We talk about a value that is represented uh, by a number in the boost controller that then gives you a boost number. So, for instance, you'll hear us say this a lot. When we put that new turbo on the Bad Apple, it actually was almost one-to-one. -one. We had 25 pounds on the gate. It made 25 pounds of boost. We then bumped up to 30 pounds on the gate. It made 27 pounds of boost. So, right there is a good example. You can't see... Uh, you can see that those numbers do not 100% correlate. Just because you put 27 on the gate does not mean you're gonna make 27 pounds of boost. That is why we data log. Uh, so that's just kind of like a brief rundown of the CO2 boost controller. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the valves out and show you guys how they work with Ben. Ben is the mastermind. Ben, ben has the most understanding out of everyone here on how they work. I have a general idea and concept of how everything works. That's how I can kind of relay information to Ben. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have an issue, I'm like, Ben, help me out and Ben, nine times out of ten knows what's going on so uh, about to pull up to the shop here in a minute not five minutes of me talking i know you guys probably hate me right now but my channel is hopefully enjoyable and entertaining to you guys but uh the goal is to be entertaining and you guys can learn something from it so uh there's your little five minutes of knowledge uh let's get to the cow and see what we got going on 
I'm sorry, sir. Who are you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I know we're here. Remove, remove the hat. Oh my God! The internet shall be broken. It just crashed. Wow. Wow. All right. So if you remember the video where this thing was kind of acting up, we were over here in this corner where this uh, boost solenoid block is. And it's got two little bullet valves in there, and uh, what it does is we have. Both these lines go to the wastegate. Sorry, first thing I do is I grab this, the overflow. The overflow. Pungent, man, it smells like uh, a car. It smells like Q16. And yeah. high guard. And high guard. Yeah, it is pretty gross. Um, so, here are wastegates. We have, was it CO2 on top mm -hmm. and vacuum on bottom? Mm hmm. And the vacuum source comes over from that vacuum block, runs around, and it Y's right. Somewhere. The Y is somewhere. Here's the Y. So we got one going to the driver side wastegate, one going to the passenger side wastegate. Coming off here, we got our, what is that? Is that a 0 to 100 pressure? Two. 0 to 200 uh, pressure transducer? Transducer? Trans pressure sensor. Yes. Pressure sensor? Okay, we're, I'm, I'm trying to get... Uh, that's, a, that's a 5 volt reference, so it doesn't use 12 volts. It uses 5. And um, it just makes like a little algebraic graph it's nothing more fancy than what you learn in seventh grade math <laughs> really it's got a slope and a y-intercept and it just uses that equation to translate voltage into psi so we have the co2 that comes in through this line here and then it goes into you get these two valves which they're you can see them right there they're on top of the brick um and then the valves flutter You'll hear them whenever you flip the switch with the key on power and this, that's how we have set up on this key on power. You can operate the boost controller, you flip a switch, it activates it. Uh, so we make all the adjustments in the boost controller uh, with it actually turned off, but it has power. Then when you activate it, uh, you'll hear these things fluttering until they get CO2 on them. And what are they doing? They're trying to target and then regulate whatever commanded CO2 yeah, is on there. One of those valves, oh, one of those valves lets CO2 pressure in here and the other one lets it out. And it will vary. So they're they're pulse width modulated valves, so they'll pulse at like a percentage. You hear people talk about duty cycle, like 10%. That's that's what that is. So 10% would be like, you know, make a certain frequency, like, and then like 90 would be like, like a high higher pitch. So it's got like a PID program in there where it's trying to calculate the percentage of error, and it'll give this thing a certain pulse range on a certain amount of voltage in order to regulate itself. So if it sees it's like 20. And uh, you can even get exact to like, like we're putting in like, yeah, like to the tenth. yeah 12 point five pounds, 12 point two yeah. pounds. Like you can get, and that correlates to boost. Like we're saying it's that number that we put in the AMS is not boost. We're solely putting pressure on top of the gate to then generate more or less boost, which all we're really doing is these are just used to regulate the turbine speed. If people think it's just like touching a, ba a ground, like it's a little more complicated than that. You can run those solenoids at like not just 12 volts. It can run them at like 3.8 volts. So 90% duty on 3.8 volts is will let pressure go down a lot slower than it would on 12 volts. And it knows how fast certain combinations are gonna net it. So it like, it'll chase your target. Wherever you tell it, it goes it's like a cat with a little laser. You know, you tell it where to point the laser beam where you want the cat to go and it just, it'll- It'll do it. It'll do it. It'll do it. So let me let me ask you this, right? You got two, you got an, into, essentially you have one valve that's going to let air enter, CO2 enter, and you got one that's gonna hold it in there and that's going to give you your, your pressure, right? Yeah. Let's say one gets gets stuck because it's the real world. Stuff happens. One gets stuck. What happens? If the inlet one gets stuck. The compute the little box, the boost controller box, doesn't know that when it gets stuck. So it, all it's thinking, all it can think is this. Whatever this thing, whatever it sees. So if it sees, the say the inlet inlet one gets stuck. Your regulator on your bottle is set to seventy five pounds. It's, these are going to see 75 pounds, the sensor is going to see 75 pounds, and the exhaust, the pressure down valve is just going to be going nuts. 
It's not non-stop. Close the bottle. Hey, was it shattering? Yeah. It's gonna be gone. Trying to let pressure out. And it can't do it. And it can't overcome your being <laughs> you're emptying your bottle at that point. Yeah, my bottle has a hundred and twenty PSI on it. So it's, it's high. Yeah. So what do you think these gates saw on top of them? I don't know. Probably 120 pounds. And 120 pounds on top of the gate will generate what? Besides a hole in the block. I mean, not a hole in the block, it will generate as much as boost. As much boost as that turbo will make. It's like having a kit with no wastegate. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah. Well, I went up there. The car has never in its life sounded like that. It's, everyone was saying I hit the high side rev limiter. I was like, no, I could even look at the log because the one time I log it, it does happen. And it was only at 4,500, 4, 4,600 RPMs. It felt like it hit boost cut. It, I bet it did. Yeah, it like it maxed out the map sensor. Yeah, we can we know that, and that's a three point five bar. Yeah, so like, what is that boost wise? Like thirty five, forty pounds ish. But it was only for a second. Yeah. But the crazy thing is the car stuck. You, you let go of the button and it stuck. Like it tried to move. Like it was it would have hooked up. But that is how we regulate the boost on this, and that's why like. Like Ben said, I mean, I'm telling you to turn it up for a while. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to do all that. <laughs> it, it was, it's crazy, but this thing doesn't know. It doesn't know if if a, if a solenoid mode gets stuck. No. I mean, it's just it, you tell it what to do. It commands it. Whether it actually does it or not, that's up to the valve. Just like the P, the the PCM, like the engine computer in this car, doesn't know if I took a drill bit and draw a hole in this manifold. It's got a huge vacuum leak. It's just doing what you tell it. Yeah, that's why mechanics exist. Because if not, the computer would just do everything. Yep. But you got mechanical parts interference with electronics. So like, you want to know the, what saved us though? Hmm. Is this has a little bit too much meat on it, and it was touching the throttle blade. And as soon as I let go of the button, it it sent it essentially into like a limp mode yep. where it just it cut all throttle, it cut everything. And if that didn't happen, it probably would have rode all the way down track. Making all it would have like three thirty to like a two five. The good, the good part is like, I think I mean you've got enough fuel pump. I would think a simple to. fix. So I I did go like a couple weeks without breaking anything. So I figured it was it was time to break it. Um, the the brick itself is fine. Two new bullet valves, and we should be back on the road making whatever boost we desire. Not blowing it up, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And then. Back of here trying to set new personal best with the cap. The real hero here is this little turbo, this 88 that's down there. That's the real MVP. You finally, it, it finally you worked its tail off. The dog off the chain finally got to go explore in yeah. the woods. Well, guys, that is pretty much how uh, the CO2 boost controller works with the solenoid side of it. Uh, the AMS itself, I mean, it's really... The AMS itself is not interesting to play with. It's like it's like playing Tetris. It's just yeah. like a bunch of it's got like shapes and numbers. It's got so many useless features. Yes, I literally use two features. I use launch boost and then I use overall boost with no ramp, and that is it. I put boost by gear, so you can put on a motorcycle if you want to. <laughs> but I do. This is why the Holly is nice. I was saying earlier in the video, if you have a Holly, everything's integrated right into the Holly. Holly sells this little kit here with the bolt valves and the brick. Holly has everything to run their boost control in their system. So whether you're on the Terminator, whether you're on the HP, whether you're on the Dominator, Holly has it all. You buy the Holly Dominator. I mean, this AMS boost controller, Chris, how much is AMS boost controller? I don't remember. It's expensive. Yeah, it's like eight, nine hundred bucks. Hey, by the way, plug shout in. out to JP Pastries. JP Patriot. For, for my gluten-free keto. Yeah, you're looking pretty slim, Chris. Thank you. I don't like you now. He's wearing the same size shirts that I have, and now all my shirts are going missing. My belt's gone missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's right. That's it. Ben, you are now the heaviest in the camp. Hey. Well, look at, look at, oh, look at I know, that's look what I that. said. He lost some hair, but hey, Chris, since I got you here, what do we have going on up here? What, what is this? Oh, we got we got our vision? our four cameras up with our four channel system. Sportsman series. The right? Sportsman series. Yeah, look at we got here is inside the trailer as you can see if we can get to focus. Here's the camera right there. Here we have Chris and Ben. So this is what you look at as you're riding down the road. Make sure both cars aren't going anywhere. You got out on the passenger side. 
you got looking at the tongue and you got the driver side you'll get there's there's Chris's hand waving out there and not to mention all of this you could pull it up on your phone here we are logging into the mobile vision app itself there's our address if you want to send us anything <laughs> let's see let's go to video and it takes a second here because we have terrible service but look at that just what we we're looking at right there is on your phone and then not only is that happening but if we go back here we can look at it on a map and see exactly where we are how crazy is that so uh, follow mobile vision on instagram uh, we're going to be releasing this product here very shortly as gps tracking satellite or gps cellular say both gps and cellular GPS and cellular tracking. Sorry, I'm just like a total brain fart. Uh, GPS and cellular tracking all run through an app. Um, you can play back the video footage. You could play back where you, tracking. the tracking on the map. I mean, you could do everything. Ben, is that not the cat's meow? It's as good as it gets. It is literally as good as it gets. Look, it, both these cars broke down, so we just left them here. <laughs> they haven't moved. They're both wounded, and they haven't moved. That's okay. They stay dry. Yeah. And we haven't had to move them around. And we got more room in the <laughs> shop. So don't get any ideas of trying to take our trailer because literally we'll just watch you do it. <laughs> and then we'll track wherever you go and then get our cars back. Just heck with you the whole thing. <laughs> Alright Ben, what were our discoveries here? There was a bunch of trash. How, how do we get trash in them? Uh, from the bottle. No, don't tell me that. I filter. I only fill my bottle with the cleanest CO2. Yeah. Apparently somebody's... Uh broken in there <laughs> now what happens is uh i get my bottles filled at like um we use parish fire um just a, any place that fills like fire extinguishers some people do um what's it called nitrous night well some people use nitrous but some people get them like uh where they like the beverage companies if they have uh for like kegs and shit oh, you know what i'm talking about yeah total wine yeah <laughs> Yeah, total line. I'll fill your fill your CO2 bottle, uh, but it really only costs like ten, twelve dollars to get it filled. Uh, but I guess this is one of the the downsides. I mean, hell, we've been running CO2 through this thing for like four or five years, and this is the first time we've ever had any issues. So I consider that a great success. We're about to test it here and see if they click. Mm -hmm. You want me to? Oh God, I have to go through the. I have to go through the back. Hold on. I honestly don't know if I'm skinny enough. Oh no. Oh no, my phone's going off. Who is it? Kevin. Oh, this is important. All right, Ben literally tinkered with this for about two minutes and you fixed the solenoids. Yeah. So they were just full of trash. They were. If I'm losing a race and they fill up with trash, honestly, I wouldn't be too upset. Because it start hauling ass for about a second until the bottom end let go. <laughs> well,. What do you got to do? Just tighten that up? Do I not need new valves now? You need new fitting on there. I don't know. I know we're fitting Oh, yeah, on. you did. Yeah. Will you cut that bottle off? Oh, yeah. Let me, let me snake through here. Hey, where's my charger to my... Uh... Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit. We got the cow all set, ready to go. When you guys are going to be watching this video, it's going to be Saturday late afternoon. Right now it's 5.15, so if I get it out by 6, we'll be good. Uh, tomorrow we're going to head to Piedmont with the cow. Uh, just Ben and myself, we're going to take it slow, throw it back. Old school style, uh, tiny trailer, generator, cooler. Go out there and make hopefully some fast licks and head home. Uh, we'll bring some shirts out there. Uh, be sure to stop by, say what's up. Uh, so Piedmont Dragway tomorrow, uh, check that out. Uh, and like I said earlier, 25% off sale in the store. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like always comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload.